What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to helping you grow your app downloads and your revenues. And a beautiful Friday afternoon for you today, or a Friday morning for you guys. And today, we've got a phenomenal guest. We're going to take a look at your apps, like we always do every Friday. And we're going to talk to our guests all about the key metrics that you really have to focus on to really grow your business. And too many times, I feel like, App, as app developers, we're so into the weeds of our own apps that we only focus on the top funnel stuff, like the downloads. And my guess, we're going to talk, we're going to dissect all of this and figure out how do you figure out that key metric that's going to really turn into a loyal user and ultimately, hopefully, into the best type of user, whether that be sales or just retention, whatever you're looking for, depending on the app you're building. So let me introduce a guest. His name is Lior Birak, and he has... Let me pull up his bio as well. <laughs> Horrible start. Uh -huh. He's a data strategist with over 12 years of experience in his field. He's worked with companies such as Nielsen, Cisco, Zalingo, Zalando. And he's also the author of Data is Like a Plate of Hummus and co-host of What the Data. You can learn all about him by going to his website, taleaboutdata.com. But all that is linked up into the description as well. Lior, welcome back. I'm so happy to be here. It's a beautiful yeah. uh, Friday evening here. Yes, but for us, it's getting darker. No, <laughs> it was cold today. It's it's not too bad right now, and I I changed up my camera, so hopefully this camera is better. I can't get rid of all these wires, but it will have some fun as well. <laughs> That's what it's all about. So you know, let's start off with this, Liar, and we do have some audits that we're going to take a look at as well. But let's start with this. You know, we talked about this before we hit record, but when i'm working with clients like what is that we try to figure out what is that key metric that's going to really turn into a loyal user so how do we if we're just beginning how do we figure that key metric out and the example i gave you was like twitter and twitter found out that hey if i can get people to follow i forget it was three or five people i know they're going to become a real loyal user and one of our clients he's like if i can get person to work out just once i know they've become a really loyal loser but like how do you figure that out so yeah, so I think that uh, it was it what what it called actually it's a, a loyalty KPI kind of fish. Uh, I more subjected into a user scoring, uh, which actually not only saying okay if you're following three people or if uh, let's take a, let's take an example of an e-commerce right. So you have an e-commerce, you have a website, or you have an app, and you having users coming to your website. Then you want to transfer them to your app, and you want to start converting them on the app. How do you do it? What do you need to understand there? And I think that the most uh, interesting part of it is that it's not only that the user comes and places an order, because before he places the order, there are so many uh, levels that he is engaged with your product before he even willing to go inside. Uh, and if he got used to show, for example, in your web, and now you're moving to that. Uh, on the other side, if it's an app only, and actually the user prefer to order on the web, you need to convince him. And through, to do that, you need to go through several funnels. And the further in the funnel you bring him, the higher the chances are to convert him. But here, there is no one metric that you can say, OK, three visits. Or you cannot say it's only uh, after he, he started to one training because I, I do believe that we are so engaged with our app that sometimes our users don't see it the same way as we do. And they doing they going through many more processes than, than what we do usually. Uh, one of the beautiful examples that I have is actually uh, with an app that we're working with. Uh, here in Germany, it's a very German, it's local German uh, app. And what they found out was actually that users that coming in for the first time, they reading more condition, the privacy policy, uh, more information about how the shipment going before they even getting engaged with products. And if we saying, okay, if somebody saw one product, most likely it's gonna be quite complicated just to do it based on that because it could be that we lost them somewhere in the process of the terms and condition of the privacy, and then we not know what was actually the blocker. Yeah, I see that too. And I think it's so, it's kind of like, you just have to look at the data, right? The art, like there's no real yeah. way to just, other than just say, and we're gonna take a look at this and Bianca's here as well with her app. It's like, there's no real way to just figure that myth and trick out without really analyzing the data. Is it gonna be, so for Bianca, is it like, 
adding she's a co she has a co-parenting app is it like just getting the other co-parent onto it or is it sending that first message so as we figure that out it is just pretty much looking at the data if i'm summarizing what you said it's it's looking at the data and it's understanding also what are the important parts for the user so what is he most interested in what which features are actually the most important and then based on need to understand what is the quality or what is the the score that the user is going to get based on on what he's doing, uh, but yeah, it, it's mostly it's mostly the data, and then of course uh, understanding what do we want, because we as app developers many times I think that one of the the biggest issues is that we are missing actually to take the look on the client side. We're building an app, we're so believing in it that this is the perfect match. And then after a while, you're actually realizing that there are some stages that we are missing and we should uh, actually include them. And if we're just looking at one metric as visits or product watch, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have good data and good outcome of it. Totally. And what I've been trying to shift the narrative here is I've talked to just a couple of people yesterday, like, hey, Steve, how do I you know grow my app? And you know, when they say that, they usually mean, how do I grow my downloads? And I'm like, well, let's look at the data. Let's let's see what it says. What do we need people to do? And I think the sophisticated clients that are really making money, they know certain things, right? Like one client said, hey, I need two, I need people to listen to two sessions. And one other client said, I need somebody to work, finish a workout. Like that's, so they know some of these numbers. So let's start with this then. They are like, if, it, if I'm just starting out, is it just easy as putting some, Firebase analytics and looking at what people are doing, or should I be doing other things? And one thing I did with my app was I went to usertesting.com and I was like, hey, what do you think about my app? Try to do X, Y, and Z. You know, do you know what you're buying? Like, should we do something else to figure out what we might be doing wrong rather than just looking at the downloads? Definitely. So one thing is that if you're just having Firebase, uh, it's a little bit complicated because you want to be able to download the data and analyze it in an easy way and on a daily basis, so you can actually see which events or which features are being used or not. Uh, and also, I think that if we're going a little bit backwards, the most important thing is actually to make sure that you have tracking in place, that each feature, each page, each uh, component on the page is being tracked and it's being uh, sent somewhere so you can set, use the data. Uh, and then you can basically start getting some users in, you can look at the numbers, understand what is the direction, figure out where people are actually dropping or where you're losing them, and what is the percentage. And then you go and do the research with the users themselves. So you're paying them to give you feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're understanding much better, actually, OK, maybe my terms and conditions are complicated. Man, mm -hmm. just focusing on downloads, I think that it's a huge mistake because, great, you brought half a million downloads. Come, I can sell it for you for 10 cents or I can sell it for you for 5 cents. Right. Does it necessarily mean that this user is going to come back and they're going to actually increase your profits? Most likely not. If you're not going to go there and understand, okay, user that I brought, he signed in, he registered, or he logged in, then he looked at products, or he played a game, or he was doing one session or two sessions. This is the only way to actually make sure that you're earning money and you're not just owning an app. And I think that this is a huge mistake by a lot of uh, uh, app publishers to look only on the downloads and saying, I have 1 million downloads or 100K downloads. It says nothing yeah. because there are a lot of apps out there with millions of downloads, but 99.5% uh, of the users left uh, after the first session and they never came back. Yeah. So it means that there is no so base in, in a day that you will want to start making money. There is nothing there to actually use for making any money because your user just came in and left. Yeah, I agree. All right. I've got some questions coming in too. I want to say some hi to some people. Joe, what's happening, man? Always good to see you. Naeem says it is an important that is an important topic. So I'm glad you think so. Bianca's here. What's happening? And then I said, I agree with you. Brandon Brothers, <laughs> how's it going? Brizwajit, hi everyone. John, how's it going, brother? And then Lior, somebody. Joe says hi, Lior. Good. Andy's here from South Carolina. I mean, I'm sorry, SoCal. <laughs> Trying to go too fast. That's why I got to slow. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael, what's happening? I know. What was the Russian term to say hi? 
but that's what it is, Raphael. All right, Bianca asks, hey, every app is unique, Lior, but what are some general metrics that every app needs to be focused on? So the general ones I would say is retention. So day one, day seven, day 30, day 180. So understanding in the long term also how users coming back. It's also looking at uh, the key components of conversion. So everybody has an end goal. And I think we also talked about it in the podcast uh, that there is one goal that you want the user to, to actually make when he arrives, right? Either it's registration or placing an order or subscribed or, or whatever operation. And I think that this is a metric that you need always to say, what is my end conversion, my, my end of the funnel when a user done the operation I wanted? Other than that, you can look at installs, but I actually think that install says nothing. If you're looking at retention, I would prefer to look at retention day one and see how many users I have there or day three. Uh, and I will be able to actually make many more actions based on this information rather than just knowing that I have X amount of installs. This installs is maybe a ratio of retention that will be uh, used as well. Uh, other than that, I don't think that there is many KPIs that are aligned to every every app, right? Because the use time is different, uh, the screens are different, the end the goal is different. So we need to adapt based on it. Is there a good day one, day three metric that we should be trying to shoot for? Uh, I would say that just retention. So amount of users that came on day zero, so they download installed because download it's I download the app installed I open it and then from this point it did it came back after the third day yes or no or after the seventh day if it didn't come out of the after the seventh day then it means that we're doing something very wrong and then when you start understanding us as a, as an app publisher what are actually the steps that we we're expecting him to do and how many of these steps did he achieve or not okay does this answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Right. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> while you're talking, Leo. I'm like doing other things, so you guys don't see that in the background. Yes, I believe so. And let us know if that doesn't answer the question, Bianca. But I think that was a great point for us to get to. All right. What I do want to move on to, Leo, is let's take a few look at the few of the apps that we have in store for today. The <clears throat> if you guys do want to get us and my me and my guests to look at your apps, just go to appmasters.com/slash audit at masters.com slash audit. And here's the thing I would say to the audience, we do give a lot of advice on this. If it works great, obviously email us. We want to know when it works and we covered, we'd love to have you on and kind of feature it and all that stuff. If it doesn't work, please let me know too. That's okay. Yell at me, right? Like I want to know what works and what does not work importantly as well. So if you took our advice and you said, Steve, that did not work at all. I want to know that too. So don't be afraid of doing that. All right. And then, oh, okay, well, let's talk about this real quick and then I'll, we'll get into the thing. Bianca says, what's the best tool to measure the app retention? Oh, I think you're on mute, Lior. I can't hear you. Oh, unless it's sorry. Mute. Yeah. Uh, so for app retention, I would say uh, there are several tools out there. There are, you can use Firebase as a basic solution. Uh, I actually prefer, and we also talked about it in the, in the podcast to go into first party, so meaning some local tracker that is set on your AWS account or on your Google Analy on your Google uh, BigQuery, and then you're just getting the data uh, without sharing it with third parties. Of course, that uh, you can go to any MMP out there that giving you services. Uh, they also do retention. Uh, but again, one thing that is important to mention with the new change of uh, Apple. If you are tracking it based on uh, device ID, most likely you won't be able to do it unless you get a consent. And right now the number is saying between 20 to 50% of the users consent. And you also need to give them the right reason why you need to track their device ID. So it's important part that maybe if you're doing it internally, you will be able to assign them a unique ID for the app itself. So create your own uh, ad ID. This has not been yet tested. This is not yet live, so I'm not sure if it's going to work. Uh, but it is something that we're planning to experiment with in the coming months to actually see if we can set an internal app ID. Wow, that's interesting. That's very geeky for me. And he says, what's a good program service to track all of this? Would it just be, still be like Firebase or you'd have to build something internally? Is there a one-stop shop that we can get tracking for all of this? So uh, as I said, you can do it with uh, AWS Snowplow, which is quite easy to set up and then start tracking. 
Uh, you can do it with Firebase. I tend not to trust Firebase uh, or any third party services because one of the biggest issues with it is that there is a data loss between uh, the app and a third party because it's basically going to somebody up and then you need to download it down towards you. Uh, and when you're building a, a first party tracker, it means that you're tracking it yourself and it's quite easy to set up. It's not that complicated. Uh, we're doing it many times. Uh, and then basically all the data flows directly from the app to your uh, server. So there is no data lost in between. Mm. Okay. And then Biswachi says, Steve, can you look at my Dark Legends game on Play Store? I will. There's a long list, but fill out that form at masters.com slash audit. All right. Since Bianca is here, I'm super excited to have her. Sorry, Bianca. I apologize because I told my team, like, they thought because you came on to the live stream that we already done it. And I was like, no, no, no. I see Bianca's app. We should definitely do hers. So Bianca wants to talk about ASO, and that's the primary thing. But we're going to take a look at your app as well. So she shared her. The success story a few months ago in that January episode, if you guys want to check it out. But it is a co-parenting app for messaging. So number one co-parenting app, set communication boundaries. She got featured. love these screenshots. And then all these tools. Anything you want to start with, Liar, from an ASO standpoint? Uh, no. Let's, let's, let's flow. Let's uh, start it. What do you think about the screenshots as a user? <laughs> so you, you search for co-parenting, and you see this. They are super awesome because actually you have here quite a nice setting of the app. So you have the different screens, and of course you have the featured by, which always increasing a little bit your uh, security in using something. Yeah, one thing that is uh, yeah. can be interesting actually. There is nothing here about the privacy because we're dealing here with uh, divorced mm -hmm. parents, and we have basically the father and the mother and the kids' information most likely inside the app. How do you actually making it safe and secure? Is I think for me that would be the first thing I would look at. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. Okay. What one thing, and maybe I'll we'll look at it on the App Store too. One thing that I noticed too, Bianca, would be it's kind of busy, like the background. While it looks makes it look pretty, maybe Joe, you can jump in on here this in the comments. But like, it feels a little bit busy by having these little backgrounds in the back, and it looks cool here. But I think with here i don't know it just sort of brings my eye everywhere versus like just reading this reading this and then reading this so that's just my nitpicky feedback from you from the aso side here's what i love to do bianca is and i've covered this in the past but i go to a tool called app follow whoops shoot wrong one. wrong zoom in i want to see more of myself all right i go to a tool called app follow and I'm going to assume, Bianca, that your the main keyword that you want to rank for is co-parenting, right? And so what I do is I click on co-parenting. And now I'm looking at the search results. And one of the things I like to do is find the app that probably doesn't belong. So there's a couple that stick out to me, right? There's So this one has 13,000 reviews, 14, close to 14. This one has 13,000. They're both for co-parenting. And then we parent only 600. I'm like, huh. But it's beating a 9,000 review app. Now we have no idea what they're doing from, you know, if they're doing black hat strategies, all that stuff. And here's one with 120. So here's a couple of different candidates. I like this because it has more stars. So I just click on this, right? And then what that does, what App Follow will give you is the list of keywords that Apple search ads would recommend if you put this we parent app into the Apple search ads recommendation. So now I can see like all the keywords that they might be potentially using because I'm just going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're they've got something good from an ASO strategy because they're outranking some of the people that they shouldn't be outranking from just the, the normal algorithm and reviews standpoint. So here's some keywords that I think you should be targeting. And one thing that really stuck out for me was co-parenting has the most traffic and I'm assuming unless you want like shared calendar or family calendar, but from what you're trying to accomplish with your app. So like I would have co-parenting rather than co-parent, right? Or peaceful co-parenting that's it right like and i don't know i think that's too long if we had try to put messenger but peaceful co-parenting might be the better way of actually having your app name so that you can rank for co-parenting because that is the mo main keyword because i even see co-parent down here and it doesn't have as much traffic as co-parenting right 25 score and 31 score here that's how i would start modifying this and that's an easy way of starting to 
adjust your keywords that way. And then, you know, we'll look at the Spanish Mexico. I know you've probably been following some of this stuff. Uh, so I can't see it. Apparently it's not available in the Mexico market. So it's probably why, even if it's not Bianca, you can still utilize the Spanish Mexico localization to better rank your keywords. So I'll give you that. Cool. And then Steve. Okay. All right. We got some feedback. App follow is the thing. All right. <clears throat> the Joe says, I like the improvement of the featured and logos not being contained in the phone screen anymore. I agree that's a bit busy. It's definitely a lot going on. Okay, cool. I'm glad he said that. We Bianca added these and she had them in the phone before, Lior, just so. Yeah. And then John asked, Steve, do you think keyword density makes any difference in the app store? I use the same keyword than title, subtitle. I don't think so, John, but obviously every app, every keyword's different. <laughs> And some people I've talked to said, Hey, yeah, I do that. So he repeats the, the same keyword in the title, subtitle and keyword field. And he's ranking really well for a very competitive term. I tried that myself. I didn't see the results. So it's worth testing for you. And then if it doesn't work, just put in the title and you'll be done with it. Bag of yes. This is why I love this community. Okay. People are coming in and giving advice to bag. Bag yes says, I'm not convinced with the color combination used in images shown on the app store parenting app. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. The number one quarantine app, Joe says the number one co-parenting app in the text on the first screen seems very congested. Yeah. The olive branches are a nice touch, but there's far too much text within. Yeah. I kind of agree with that too as well. All right. And then the, what you can do Bianca is highlight some of the t tools. So when you say number one quarantine app, or I'm sorry, quarantine, number one co-parenting app to keep the peace, you can make that bigger. You can kind of lose this screenshot and then just put featured in down here and then go into some of the main tools that your app does. Right. All right. Let's see. Anything else you want to cover Liar? Buy me some time. Uh, not that much. I'm just like from the keywords, maybe I can add here. That's yeah. an in interesting uh, subject actually. So people asking how, if I'm using the same keywords in the title and then description and so on, what is the effect of it? Uh, there is no proof uh, to any of what I'm saying, but we see it quite often mm -hmm. lately that when you're using a, a dominant keywords at the entrance, so when the title, uh, mm -hmm. your chances to get ranked higher are better. All the time that you're still driving installs and you still have retention because lately, they uh, when you see the title keywords, they're also looking at the retention of the users there. Meaning that if you have co-parenting, they will check how many times people came back because this is the highest uh, uh, KPI for them to know if this app is actually serving what it was promising in the title. Uh, so this is, again, something that is worth checking out. And this, again, if we go into retention, it's a very important part also to check. Yeah, great. So like, it looks like Bianca is using a video. I like it. Bianca, what I would say is video A-B test app because obviously sometimes video increases conversion, sometimes actually decreases conversions. And then when we look at the text here, you can see that the text becomes very small to read. Like I'm looking at my phone and it becomes hard to read. I'm always of the mindset that make big text, show it a little bit more, less text, big text is what I always am a big proponent of. And then Joe's got some comments in the comment below, or in the comments too. All right, let's take a look at the app real quick and then we'll get into, all right, Bianca, you know, you want to ask for the, you want to ask for the notification, not just pop it up, but for this app, maybe you lean it, right? Like, because you, you do need to have it. All right. Sign up. Okay. I'll sign up and then I'll get into the app itself. Let me show something else, Lior, <laughs> while I sign up. <laughs> All right. There you go. I'm signing up, Lior. I'm here. I don't want to give away too much of my information. I'm an open book, but. <laughs> Bianca, if I can ask, uh, how do you store the data today? Where do you store it actually? Yeah, that'd be good. That would be an interesting question. Child, I'm going to put Noah. Okay. Sorry, I'm going through that, so I should bring back. Okay, so I signed up. I added my child, personal information, other names, i.e. caregiver, okay. Add caregiver. I think there's a lot of room here. Bianca, I think you can add, make this a little bit bigger, but I will say Lior. 
Oops. Lior is one of the Uncle Lior. Um, uh, uh, sign me in. Okay. <laughs> I got Joe. <Gio. laughs> I got a lot of caretakers, and I'm gonna put Bianca as well. Let's just see what happens. Let's have some fun. Okay. And then okay. So I, I I didn't like that I had to scroll down just to hit next. I think the the next should somewhat be close still. It looks like it's a fixed pixel, and that's why it's pushing it down. Anyways, getting too geeky. Okay. Oh, I got it. ah. What do you feel about that, Lior? That I have to fill. Then you lost the user most likely. Yeah. At this point. So now I have to confirm my email address. So he, she's using data storage in AWS. Now, I did have a question on this topic from somebody else. You said Andy was like AW, AWS Amplify. Is that what you meant for storing the data or just? No, 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 no. So okay. AWS, you can store it either on S3 and then process it with Lambada. You can store it on, uh, you can build your own data infrastructure in there. Uh, the easiest thing is basically to dump everything into an S3 during the snow blow. I can S write it down as well. Okay, maybe you can put it in the comments. It looks like S3 yeah. and something else. That would be interesting too. I think this is a question that I get from a lot of our clients as well. Okay. Yeah, she's loving all the feedback, so it's good. All right, I'm gonna confirm my email real quick, but yeah, I, I agree with Lior. I think I wanted him to say it too, because I think I would lose him like, ah, oh, really? Fine. I wish I'm already logged in. I already added my thing. So like, why can't I just use the app and maybe have them confirm or I lose certain features, Bianca, but like, is that what you would recommend? We are like keep me signed in, but let me do certain things. So don't arrive even to the screen. So once they registered, then do the confirmation, then go to fill up the details. Because once you started mm -hmm. getting engaging, filling up the details, you lost the user, right? You're going right. to basically think about where is he going from here? Because now he doesn't have access to the email and you lost him and he started yeah. feeling up and he's feeling frustrated because he started to engage with the app. It's better yeah. before he's starting to get engaged to actually do the confirmation and then let him start. Okay. I love that feedback. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. So now I've signed in because I confirmed it. Now I signed in just to how to invite a contact. Any feedback here, Lior? It's quite a lot of uh, screens, but it's okay. It's 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 the colors are very, very in your face. So it's, I like it actually. Okay. Bianca, are you tracking actually who is checking the tutorial, the way that it is right now? Because you're giving them quite a lot of information in the beginning, mm -hmm. and it's before they even started to play with the app. So I'm not sure how much they actually can relate to what they see here. Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's a little bit too much information too. And I generally just skip most of these things. So, and then Bianca, you know, like I love this upgrade to premium, but this is very empty. So you should show this upgrade to premium right after I'm done. Cause that's one of the best practices that we always recommend, but it felt very empty there. So I like this Whoop. increase time. Oops. I don't know what limited chat means. Oh, okay, I guess it means like less text can chat. Okay. All right. Is there a trial on any of these? That's a lot of information. Yeah. I mean, we've been trying to say like longer pricing pages is better because a lot of people want some of this stuff. So that's what I've been, that's what she's following here along. I think. I would try to do trials. I feel like this is kind of bland in my eye. I think there's, yeah, there's more ways that you can say, hey, what people like about the app, you can add a little bit more to this. But, oh, okay, I like this. Bring these to the game. Yeah, because this is so empty, I just feel like you can do more to either promote the premium or get people to engage. Because we are listening through this. Like, what's the main metric? What do you think that Bianca should be aiming for? Like, adding somebody probably is probably going to be the biggest difference because then finally they have a connection and that's what's going to really do it. Right. Like, it seems like that would be the key metric that you want to focus on. It's like, how do I get somebody to invite somebody else? Because that's what a co parenting app, I'm going to assume, has that. Right. 
It's not only the invite, it's also the engagement. So the one that got invited, did he register? Did he finish registration? Right. And did he start chatting? So once you start chatting here, that's the time mm. to actually go to the upgrade premium because you already got a taste of the product. They have already communication. And now to move to another tool will be a little bit more hard for them to do so. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a practice that was done uh, by Microsoft in the past, right? They used to give you the Office 360 just for free for testing it for a month, and then suddenly you want to you keep you want to keep using it. Now is the time to pay because you already got engaged and start using it. So you start yeah. to create content in there. And you know what? Like I gave Bianca like in the beginning. You know, we I added Lior, I added Joe, I added Bianca. And it's like what happened to that info? So you could easily because there's so much space here. You'd be like add invite Joe, invite Lior, invite Bianca, right? Like you have room, you have the data. I gave you my names. So you can easily just put invite that person to this main screen because that's where I think, yeah, can display caregivers here. So Bagesh had the same thought. Bagesh, that's my tip, man. Stop, stop getting all my stuff. <laughs> I like it, cool. And then Joe says, can you use Apple sign in as well? I'm gonna leave all the feedback into the comments for those who are here live. Okay, cool. Steve, hi, Steve. Steve Majors is here. Anything else on this, Leo, you want to cover? Uh, just from the overview of it, uh, it should have a little bit more focus, maybe the menu in the bottom, and then mm -hmm. the upgrade to the right. I would try maybe, or try to switch it a little bit uh, so it will be a little bit more clear. Yeah, that's actually a great it's point. Dead. Sorry, go ahead. So if it's, if it's just the chat, then it means that this is where we're starting. And then I will go down and I will start switching between the screens. But the main one should be the most important feature, which is the chat. But all the time, I don't have a user there. Or I don't have, I didn't invite anybody and I didn't register. There is no reason maybe to show even the chat at the beginning. But on the contrary, pull, like have a screen that's saying invite a guest or invite right. a partner. Right. That's what I would have done at least. Yeah, I think so too. And then I agree with you with the adding, moving the premium to maybe the top right, because as I get into these other screens, I lose the whole premium aspect of it as well. And then it's like I'm running, let's just put the team. So I don't know how to, what these canned ones are. Like, I don't know how to use it yet. We missed the tutorial. We just jumped on it. I know. And that, that's what I would have done because there's just too much. But that I'm a dude, right? Like I, I just, this is just what I do. I just prefer to like figure it out on my own. <laughs> so maybe so. the tutorials again on each of these pages, so each of these screens to be able to to check it out again. So some right. question mark or something like this you can open and then see what it, what you can do. What does it mean when I'm running 15 minutes late? Is it sending it somewhere? Is it keeping it on the device? Yeah. So giving a little bit more information about it. All right, so, and then I wanna close the loop on something else. You said it's Snowplow or store yeah. on S3? It's sitting on S3 and using Snowplow for the tracking, for the first party tracking. If somebody has more questions, they can reach out uh, on LinkedIn. I can give them some more details about it. All right, let me pull it up. Snowplow, so use Snowplow analytics and store it on S3. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, this is good stuff. I love it. Uh, any other tools you want to recommend, Lior? Any other tools? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, for dashboards, they can. If you're already in AWS environment, you can try to use a quick site from Amazon. It's cheap. It's easy. Then you can build your dashboard and make most of the data. So once you're doing Snowplow, you're transferring it to the S3, you're storing it there, and then you're processing it and moving it directly into a dashboard on a quick site. So you don't need to actually start using Excel. A quick Great site. Saving. You said? QuickSight, yeah, Amazon QuickSight. All right. Yep. Cool. I will link to all that into the descriptions. Okay. The dashboard here looks super cool. Uh -huh. Don't don't try to to reproduce them. Okay. You will never <laughs> arrive. <laughs> okay, I like it. All right. John says, interesting fact. A while ago, I put a keyword in my screenshots in Google Play and didn't use that keyword anywhere, not in the title. And somehow I got ranked for that keyword. Yeah, John, I've heard that too. I'm glad you share that. That if you use certain, this was like years ago, Leo, like when pe people were saying like Google was starting to index the keywords that you're using in the actual screenshots. Because fucking Google, yeah. man, they just got the brains, right? They, yeah, like analyzing everything. Yeah. They're analyzing so everything today. 
Yeah, they're, that's amazing. So great tip, John. And that's what I actually do recommend. That's why I was telling people like, hey, that main keyword, I don't know if I, I don't know where I said it. But anyways, the main keyword, show it in that first screenshot that you're going after. Like, because one thing that I would say is, you know, there's a Google AdWords trick where you bold the key, you use the keyword that you're trying to rank for or you're bidding on, right? Because then it bolds it. And then it's like, okay, cool. And that gets more click throughs. So I was like, just use the same thing right here. It's, and I think Bianca's doing this well, but co-parenting app, like make it huge because that's the main keyword you're trying to target. People, you're just sorry saying, yes, Lior, you found the right place. You search for co-parenting. I'm showing you that keyword in my screenshots. So that's the idea there, but it, it should yeah. help with your ASO as well. So good stuff. Thank you, Bianca. Let us know how it goes again. If it doesn't work, let us know that too. And if it, if it does, obviously let me know. I'd love to have you back on to the show and share some stuff. Lior, I, I forgot to do this before my previous app audit, but I've got a joke for you. Now I couldn't find my bell. I think I left it at home because last week I did the, the app audit at home. So this doesn't work well, right? I need a little audience cheer, but all right, Lior, you, you ready for the joke? Let's do it. How? Give me as, men, as, as good of a fake laugh as you can, okay? How do you get a farm girl to like you, Lior? How do you get a farm girl to like you? How? A tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is great. Lior's great. All right. <laughs> Always have to have Lior. <laughs> Lior, anything you want to cover before we move on to the next audit? audit? Like anything I missed that you, you want to make sure when we're talking about data analytics? No, no, not at this point. But I would say something for Bianca. So if she's actually want to improve the app, she should start understanding how the user is reacting actually with landing in a chat rather mm -hmm. than landing in another pages. So maybe try also to play with the pages. It can be interesting experiment. So some maybe testing between them. What is it landing them into the oh, other pages rather than the chat? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So not immediately into the chat, but other, to other pages and see how people are reacting to it. Interesting. That's a great tip. OK. And then RAM 1. One, I forget what the scores are. I say, hey, one if it's super lame, and then one, or no, one if it's funny, and 10 if it's a lame. But OK, I'm glad. One as in good. OK, good. Thanks, Ram. <laughs> I almost forgot what I told you guys as well. OK, let's get into the next app. And they want us to look at this app. Lior, I got to say, like when I first started, I thought I would just get like smaller apps. But let's check these apps out that we're now having to audit. 10 million plus downloads. So they're doing pretty well, right? They want us to look at the UI and app monetization. So no better person to do that than you, Lior. Let me pull up the app on my Android. Move that over. OK, let me make sure that's coming out OK. Man, every time I blow this up and make it full screen, it doesn't look good. So you're going to have to bear with us and just do it this way. All right, let's take a look. We all need to see these type of apps. Fire. I'm sorry? I said I'm going to go bring my magnifier. <laughs> yeah, I know. It must be pretty hard for you. OK, let me try this. If it cancels, then it cancels. All right. Fast scanner, the fastest and e easiest way to scan. OK, cool. Let's get started. See, I like this, right? Like super clear text, high, like big text. I know you guys might not be able to see it so well, but use cropping. I like it. Very minimalistic. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. And then it's just easier to read. Like not a lot of stuff, not a lot of colors. My eye goes immediately to the text. I can skip up top. So everything looks so good so far. Yep. I was expecting this, which is what we recommend too. Hit him with no, an offer. Uh, the screen is oh. moving in. It's all your fault, Liara. I blame you. I knew. I knew. I'm sorry. Yeah, I told you to keep it small. And you're like, Steve, my eyes. I can't see it. All right, let me try it again. <laughs> I'm getting old, you know. I'm starting to lose it. I don't see anymore as I used to. Uh, uh, try it again. Let's see. All right, I'll, I'll I'll get this to work. Don't worry. Okay. Anyways, I'm seeing a pricing page, so let me try this way again. Let me try signing out and signing in because the le next app we have is a. I'm gonna scan you, scan this. Watch this, guys. Bear with me. I got another joke, Leo. If you want another joke, so, let's, <laughs> let's do, do another one. Why not? Let's do another. You got one on your own? Some people are like Steve. Uh, I had no I, idea you're gonna do a joke because, shoot, I would have. 
I would have came up with the joke too, and I was like, oh, all right, well, let's do it then. Uh, I've okay, that joke. So, yeah, no, very bad. Okay, hit it. What's your, what's your joke? You no, know, it's it's really bad ones. No, oh, you only have really bad ones. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, cool. I'm back. So here's the pricing page. I'm gonna keep it like this because every time I blow it up, it loses connection for some reason. I love this. And then it's seventeen dollars a year, which is super cheap. So I like that as well. I'm gonna X out. And the X out is way up top, so that's good. Like Xing out is so different from continue now, but looks really good. I think the only thing Can I might add is was, was this a pre, pre given before I even used the app? So was it before I, you even mm -hmm. tested it? Yep. What is the best practice? Let me ask you that, okay? What is your yeah. best practice actually about uh, the pricing stream? To show it. So one of my best practices is to go longer because I do think that on the web, we all see longer pricing pages, right? Like people, I kind of equated to people who are selling like digital courses. They have very long pricing pages because in the end, people are going to skim the parts that they want to read, right? So yeah. it doesn't hurt, but they'll have multiple questions that you might not be answering with just one single page. So that's what we've seen work better. And also definitely show this pricing page on the welcome screens. So this is the best practice. I didn't get to use the app yet because there are a percentage of, and the way I say it, Lior, is you say, I want to use the app first, but there's another set of users that say, Lior, you got to check out this app, man. Like it is freaking phenomenal. It's going to be awesome for you, right? So that, then you, you equate it to the user for people who are like already game and wanting to pay. And then, you know, there's that third part, third set of users who are like, Hey, do I have to pay? Fine, I'll just pay because I need I need this app right now, right? And so you do trick them, but I think that's a smaller percentage of people that get the because yesterday, you know, I had in, in my podcast a very interesting uh, interview with somebody who's doing a uh, qualitative research mm -hmm. uh, about users on apps, uh, and one of the things that she was talking about was actually about pricing and how can you find the right moment to show it to the user. And she said that, yes, usually most practices, and as you said, it's to put it at the welcome screen already. So the user already know also what he's engaged with, right? So when he's starting, you're already aware of how much you will need to pay if he decide to, to continue with the app. But she also said that they done experiments lately with uh, upper banners. And I will be actually interested to hear if anybody tried upper banners as a pricing uh, and, and what is the conversion there. We don't have that many users that having these upper banners, but if there is somebody in the audience that uh, is doing it, it will be super fascinating for me actually to hear it. What's, a, what's an upper banner? So your upper banner is basically that on top of the app, you're just putting the, the subscription pricing as a, as a type of a top banner for the app. Oh, interesting. I've seen, mm -hmm. seen other people do that. I've seen other people do that too. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the only recommendation I would do is what is what is the difference between basic and free? And maybe you want to keep it like this because people are converting. But if I were to A-B test, I don't feel super strongly with this, but let me pull up the person's name. Azib. Azib, I don't feel super strongly about this, but like an A-B test I would say is what what is the difference to everything that I get? So what are locked and what's not? But again, you might be getting... And then Joe says, I change that to 17 per year. I would probably do that too. So... All right, let's get out of it. Oh, then show me an ad. Okay. All right. Fair. I didn't. I didn't subscribe. Allow, I guess. Cool. But yeah, here is where I think an upper banner would work, right? Like, there's so much empty space exactly. here. And exactly. I think so the start scanning cool. is too small. Like, make it big. There's no documents here. Make it super big. Start scanning. That's what you want. Put a little banner that says go premium, get access to all these features. Right. This is where, especially an app like this and Bianca's too, like you have so much empty space that you can start making the start scanning bigger. And then the because that's what you ultimately want them to do, and they'll eventually buy probably. And then you want to show your the top banner of getting premium too. Yeah. So I like that. I think uh what would be interesting is do they hmm. Here's my joke. It's not. It's a bad picture. Okay, but I want. I just want to see if they're going to show me an ad after I'm done. You have the ad is on the top, right? So you have the TikTok before that. You have the Adobe. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I, mm, yeah, I, 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 I was expecting to see an ad. Okay, it looks like it's done. Yeah, but the converting, for example, what the screen that you've been before, mm -hmm. it's a completely different than the app itself. It's like from the the UX UI look of it, so the design of it, mm. it's very very. It's like very white here, very clean, very minimalistic. And then after you Go took ahead. the picture, it was mm -hmm. a very in your face, very aggressive one, I would say. If you do it again. Yeah, because that. So here, go through this. Because mm, it goes to black and stuff. So let's it's see. like. I don't know what's free and what's not, right? So I'll just do all. Go next. So I don't know if these are premium features. Guess they're not. I'm gonna assume they're not. Auto. I'll do auto. I'm gonna hit save. And I'm gonna hit with the app. Add. I love this guy. Chris Hemsworth. He's my hero. Sorry, Brad Pitt. I moved on to Chris. He did smartly. Yeah. Yeah. Add more pages, okay, but I don't want to. I wish this just said home rather than going back, but that's, yeah, again, you can still, there's so much space, I've had two now, there's so much space that you can make the scan document centered and bigger, and then you can add more of the Go Premium banner. And then there's some feedback internally says, do, 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 do. Google automatically prices like 29.99, is it good to use, okay, is it good to use it this way for as we should we blah, 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 blah. Mahinder, I can't read your question. Is it good to use it this way? Should we change for each country? Google automatically prices like twenty nine ninety nine, etc. I prefer to see it that way, Lior, but I don't have any data. I mean, I prefer nineteen ninety nine versus seventeen, but sometimes seventeen didn't sound so bad to me. What I hate to see is like fifteen forty nine. I'm like, what the fudge? Like that I'm not used to seeing. Seventeen didn't really rub me the wrong way. It's when I see these I weird, remember, like, 49. Yeah, I always remember Walmart started to do this 1775 or 1795 suddenly, and, and it's broke. People were looking at the prices much better. But yeah. I don't think that there is best practice here. It's just uh, you need to understand what is the user is willing to pay mm -hmm. and then show it to him. I prefer clean numbers. Uh, in the data that a lot of the apps that we are using, they most mostly using with sensor then. So there's always something that's breaking it. Uh, so it's twenty nine ninety nine or twenty five ninety nine, and so on and so on. But I don't think that there is there is no one practice. There is no one thing that is working. You can do A/B testing maybe on both of them and see which one works better. So sixty ninety nine and seventeen, and actually on seventeen, I don't see what is the difference of one cent. So you can do sixty ninety nine and try and see. You're not really losing anything on the way. I know there was data before that said like ninety seven instead of like. You know, five hundred bucks, so four ninety nine. Do four ninety seven. You know. Yeah. So, anyways, I got a joke. Another one, and then we'll do the last app, and then we'll say bye. This is all for the kids. So if you guys got kids out there, like me and Lior, this your kids might like this. Lior, does a train have any teeth? No. Well, then how does it chew chew? <laughs> all right. There you go. Lior, you're perfect for this, man. Can you come on every you week see? for this segment? Hey. But you can also record me laughing and then just put it in the background, you know? <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So one, let's do this. One if you like it, zero if you don't like it. Huh? Just leave that in the comments. All right. Nice one says, I heard some rumors that having widespread in prices for different countries is against some law, especially in EU. Okay. Yes, correct. Okay. It should be in you should you should feed the price to the country. You can do it differently, but you need to align them all. So you cannot do 1999 in one country and then 15 in another one. Europe is uh, very regulated. It's a lot of fun here. <laughs> Where are you, Lior? I'm located in Berlin, in Germany. Uh, and I was talking this morning with uh, somebody from the Commissioner of Data uh, in the European Union. And what he was mentioning was that in the US, you can do whatever you want. It's like the wild, wild west. But here, we have regulations. We have rules for everything. If you, there is no rule, it means you cannot do it until you have the rule that allow you to do it. 
And unfortunately, this must be the reality here. A lot of things are very, very regulated, as well as data, for example, how you're processing data. And I think that it haven't arrived yet to, to the US, right? You're still quite wild, wild west, as he called you. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. All right, so this app is a photo app. It has 100,000 downloads. Let's take a look. The, the name, Powell is asking for ASO screenshot as well as the app itself. I think the ASO side, you guys, it looks really good. Chase Golden Hour, Blue Hour, Sunset, Sunrise, and Photography Sun Tracker. I'm not sure what the app does currently, but photo time. So let's look, create better. I like the screenshots so far. Create better photos, looks beautiful. 300,000 downloads, love this social proof, huge text. It's beautiful. Yeah. Also, the background is quite clean. Mm -hmm. There is not too much noise in there. Yeah, I like the radiant too. There was a study back then, back in the days where you want radiant because you want your eyes, if it goes like this, your eyes immediately just go down and want to read it. And so I like that they've done it. So it looks like it's like plan your photography adventure, find the best light available on modules, including weather and give you the best time. Okay, cool. And I think if you're, I'm going to assume because I'm not a photographer that blue hour and gold hour is a term that you want to go after. If it's not, then think about the, the real term that you want to go after. If it's like sunset and sunrise tracker, which you have in your app, the developer name, if it's that is a better keyword with more traffic, I'd probably have that versus gold hour, blue hour, if that's your like branded term. So, all right, cool. Yeah, that's what I would say. I actually me. downloaded it because I found oh, yeah? it super. Okay. So I have the app too. I just loaded it and uh, it just loaded immediately. It looks beautiful. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is cool. All right. So one tip I would give you is this just immediately loaded when I launched the app, which is cool. Hmm. I think I would still a try to. Sorry. Go ahead, Leo. A bit of a welcome to the user. What is it actually about? So yeah, just like one, one or two screens. It doesn't have to be many, right? Like we do have stats. One client went from seven to four screens onboarding. And he saw better conversions when doing that. But like regurgitate some of these things that you said. Create better photos. Find the best time to shoot your optimal photo. You know what I mean? I think just some words in that. And then hit me with this because this looks beautiful. The and then you can hit them with the pricing page. When you have the onboarding price, then you're like, boom, hit this, get this page. Wow. Mm. What do you think we are here? So this is the pricing page. Lifetime access. So one time access for four ninety nine or a yearly one ninety nine subscription. What is the difference between the two of them? If I do a I lifetime or I think one's one life, one's lifetime and one's yearly. I don't think that from a feature perspective, there's doesn't seem like there's a difference, is what I'm finding out. So tap so, to find out more. Yeah, it's it's the same text. Yeah. So I'd be eager. What, what is the reason for me to do subscription or to do lifetime for me? It's like buying, you know, a watermelon app and giving you the option to do a subscription or to do a lifetime access. Watermelon, when I'm, when I'm talking about it, to test if your watermelon is rip or not. So if it's ready to be eaten or not. Mm. Uh, it's the same thing that uh, here it's like, okay, what is the difference between the two of them? Is it updating yeah. yearly or not? Or how does it go? For me, it's, it's a bit of a... Yeah, and I think for a key audience like this, I have to assume, I'm not in the market, but I want, I'd want to talk to Powell and see where the, the stats are, where are most people are buying. But I do know that a friend of, or a past client of mine, he's in Europe, he's like in Germany, he said, hey, Germans, I think it was German, but like Germans don't want to pay an annual fee. So they want to, so have a lifetime option. When we added that, we saw an increase in sales. And so I like that you have two options, but I'm thinking like, why not go pick one or why not make the lifetime and subscription even closer together so that you get the user to pick one over the other? 
right? So like it's either nine ninety nine for the lifetime access. So it, I don't know what I would run a bunch of tests on this, but I I would try to test: can I do ten dollars for lifetime and five dollars a year, or can I do ten dollars for lifetime and seven ninety eight nine ninety nine for subscription, right? Because then why wouldn't you just pick the lifetime? So can you? I would run and run a test where I can one increase the value because your photographers man i've seen those cameras that's why i have a cheap little webcam right here those are expensive cameras right and so if you're trying to find the right time you probably have a nice little camera i'm assuming they're willing to pay you a little bit more than the five dollars you're charging exactly yeah. this is cool like everything else looks beautiful the only last comment i would make is this level up your photography maybe put it in white because i don't want to mess with the 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 video the colors here but at the same time it doesn't pop out to me it just feels like part of the app and so if you maybe put it as a white background then you don't ruin the the beautifulness of the app but it allows you to pop a little bit more than the rest of the app and so i can see you know here's how i buy so like the top banner that lior presented as well completely Ooh. agree yeah and then joe says but it's a photo-based app you need to show golden hour photos show they the user what they'd be able to achieve yeah i like that i like the idea of this app the main screen should have focus on countdown to gold and blue hour okay cool i like it lior and then he meant on the screenshots lior anything you want to cover before we say goodbye and good night get back to uh, your kids I, I would say one thing that i think that is super maybe important for a lot of you out there if you having an app and you're starting and you're trying to understand actually what is working or not. So understanding if your ASO is correct or not, understanding if you UX, UI uh, are fitting to what you're trying to sell. One of my best recommendations is usually is to start collecting the data. And for example, to try to create some connection between your app store uh, text to the first landing pages when they arrive into and to see how people are reacting to different text in there. And mm -hmm. basically you can go back and adapt your ASO as well. So you can show different screens when people landing with different keywords as the H1 and see how people are uh, working with it. I think that this one small interesting experiment that uh, I'm trying to run quite often with clients and see how- What are you how... using to do that? Like, are you using Apple search ads? Because how would you know what keyword they're coming into? So we're coming with Apple search ads. We're using uh, sometimes uh, App Any, and we're trying to connect or create some correlation by uh, mathematics, right? And if you know, based on your ranking, you can cry, try to create some statistical model behind it that telling you how is the spread of the users arriving and then try to see how they're relating to it. So they landed, they saw the same keyword, but they saw a different one and how they react to it. So it's more on the, on the page itself. So once they're landing. But this is, this is, I think, an entire conversation we can do about it because I can explain how we're doing it. Yeah, let's this do that. Let's have you back if you want. What, maybe after you have some stats, maybe you can, if you are willing to come back on and share that, that'd be awesome. All right, yeah. guys. Well, if you want to reach out to Lior and work with his team, him and his team, go check out taleaboutdata.com. The website's right here. He's got some great info, a lot of great questions that I routinely can't answer for clients. And like, what are uh, fire rates? <laughs> but it was a lot of good stuff. Snowplow, <laughs> that's the one. What did I write down? It's gonna put we're gonna snowplow quick site. Or, or storing the data. Yeah. So all good stuff here. Taleaboutdata.com. Lior, if the audience wants to follow up with you personally, do you want to send them anywhere else besides Tale About Data? So they can find me on Twitter as Leo B, uh, and of course on LinkedIn, Leo Barak. You can find me uh, quite easy. Uh, and if you're interested in learning a little bit more how to use your data in a better way, I can recommend you to, to come over. I have quite a lot of posts on my LinkedIn page and also on our blog uh, talking about data, usage of data, and how to become a little bit more efficient with it. Yeah, I love it. All right, guys. Next week, I told you guys last week that it was going to be Vitaly, but the next week is going to be Vitaly. We're going to talk about his water tracker app, what he's able to do, how he's able to go downloads with some of the UI fixes that he and I work with as well. So stay tuned for that. And I'll end with one last joke because I'm getting older. So it's no better way to end than with a plastic surgery joke. I remember one, if you like it, zero, if you don't, I remember a time when plastic surgery was a taboo subject, but nowadays when you mention Botox, no one even raises an eyebrow. 
And that is it, guys. Join us next week and every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Lior, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. And hopefully we can do it again soon. Yeah, I would love to talk to you about the, the keyword stuff that you just mentioned. So come back on anytime. Lior has been a repeat guest, comes on every year to share all about this data and all the knowledge that he has. Lior, thank you so much, man. And you guys have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.